Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. It's been a while since I worked with the T Deck from LilyGo. To be honest, I haven't generated any interest in developing C code in Arduino IDE for it. So it's just kind of sat on the shelf. But I got this question just this last week Where do I find instructions on how to use the T Deck once MeshTastic is installed? Uh, you can't reply to messages. And, yeah, I kind of pointed him in the right direction. It's under module config canned messages. Let's talk about flashing the T-Deck with MeshTastic. You're going to flashermeshtastic.org, and you scroll way down, and we see the T-Deck is on the list. So we can flash T-Deck with MeshTastic. Also, while I was searching to find the answer for my friend there, I found this article at MeshTastic Discourse Group, T-Deck from LilyGo, and it's got instructions for Android, iPhone, and web client. You have to allow input source, under bar any, and configure some canned messages, test one, two, and three. So we go into radio configuration, down under module configuration into canned messages. So the first thing we're going to want to do is switch canned message enabled to on. There we go. Now you see down at the bottom it says allow input source. And this is where we're going to type under bar any. And then at the bottom is the messages and the instructions said to type test 1 bar, test 2 bar, and test 3 bar. I found it was very hard to avoid sending the canned messages once you scrolled up on the, the thumb wheel or sc scrolled up on the screen. You wound up sending test messages to the main channel. I couldn't find a way to send test messages, canned messages, to a private message. It seemed like even though you selected a private recipient, it would go to the main channel. So everybody sees your test one, two, three, your canned messages. I actually, later on, because I sent so many of them to the, the main channel, I actually deleted the canned messages entirely. In fact, if you go through the web interface, you can only enable canned messages and select the allow input source. You can't configure the canned messages. There we go. We go ahead and send that. Now we're ready to test. So I'm on 20A8, and I send hello T-Deck, and you see it's received on the T-Deck. Now you can see I have the screen set to auto carousel every five seconds, so the screen will rotate. So while you're trying to type a message, <laughs> the screen will auto rotate on you. So I was having really bad luck with that. And also the trackball there, yeah, you're supposed to use that to find your recipient, but I kept selecting te the canned messages and then accidentally sending them to the main channel so everybody was getting them. Yeah, and so I got to turn off that carousel auto-rotate on the display there because basically it's going to show a different message every five seconds. You see the little uh, tabs on the bottom there. Yeah, see there I just clicked into canned messages again. So here I turned off auto-screen carousel I had it set to 5, I set it to 0, and we sent that. Now it's a little more manageable. The screen isn't flipping between screens while you're trying to type. I do manage to misspell hello, <laughs> but I do get to type it. There we go. I got to send it to 20A8. And it went right through. So you can use the screen instead of the trackball. It's a lot easier and a lot more accurate. Like I said, I actually went back in and deleted the canned messages, test one, two, and three. Oh yeah, and it's a lot easier to use once you put it in a case. We'll talk about the case in a minute. So here we're going to just start typing a message. I'm going to select the recipient first, and you just do that by swiping left or right. There's a hundred nodes on the list, so that could be a lot of swiping. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of nodes. Almost there. Keep going. Keep going. There.
There we go, getting closer. There we go, Shotoku 20A8. Now we can finish typing our message, and you hit enter instead of pressing the trackball. So you use the screen and the enter key, it's a lot more accurate. You see it went through to 20A8. Speaking of the case on Thingiverse, I found this T-Deck case by Alley Cat, and I, I have to say kudos to the creator there. Yeah, I went with the T-Deck front and the T-Deck fat back, so I'd have enough room for the 18650 battery. I just had to scale mine to 102% to make the fit perfect. So you might want to, before you try to force it in there, if it's not working out, you know, consider scaling the model in Cura. There, you see the reset button and the speaker, USB port, on-off switch, SD card. It's got this cool detail on the back of the case. In this case, it is big enough for the 18650 battery. I just hot glued the holder there. And you can read the directions on Thingiverse, what screws you're going to need to uh, seal that up. But it actually snaps shut pretty good. So I hope that answers the question for my friend there. And please leave a comment down below. Give this video a like. And before you go watch more of my Meshtastic videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.